we have, well, we, we try to be present at conferences, like for example, I am uh, here at FASTEM, and, and other directors are at other conferences. We try to be present there, but it's, we still have a problem reaching out to, to the community and, and, and getting in touch with the community. And we'd like to change that. Plus, we have a somewhat of an identity problem within the PSF. So the PSF members, they regularly ask us, uh, what's it about PSF membership? Why am I a member? The only thing that I have to do in the PSF is vote on things. <laughs> and people are not really, well, I mean, it's the only task that they have to do. So they uh, get kind of reluctant <coughs> to, to vote. And so we sometimes run into problems where we don't have enough uh, votes for a, a particular election. And that is something that we want to address, and we've addressed that last year. I'm going to talk about that a bit later. So overall, we need to change the, the whole perspective of being a PSF member. And as you can see, if you look at the membership uh, size, it hasn't grown much in the last 10 plus years, right? So we start with 16 members in 2001. Those 60 members were basically the core developers at that time. And then we really gradually and really difficult, it was a very difficult process. We, we bumped that up to 200 members in 2012. Then we decided we need to change something about that. So we, we had this, uh, the idea of opening up a bit. With opening up, we mean that we try to get people in kind of a bit bypassing the membership model that we, we had up uh, until now. The membership model worked like that. We, we basically inherited this model from the Apache Software Foundation. So uh, what we had was we had members, and those members could nominate new members, and then the members, the existing members, would vote on these new nominations to get them uh, sign up as nominated members. Plus we had sponsor members who just paid money to get in. And of course, this was a very slow process. So uh, in 2012, we tried something called associate membership, where you basically, very much like the sponsor members, you could as individual sign up as an associate member. You'd pay a, a yearly fee supporting the PSF, and then you could call yourself a PSF associate member. Well, I mean, we had 200 new signups here at EuroPython as goal. Didn't really work out, because if you look at the numbers, 2013, there were 283 members. So this uh, concept did not really <coughs> open the floodgates for us. So in March 2003, uh, Van Limburg then proposed a new model for the PSF membership. And that's what I'm mostly going to talk about today. So one part of the vision that we have, and this is a changed vision, is we want to reach out to the, to the, whole, to the, the complete Python community everywhere, worldwide. And we want to make the, the PSF a community organization where the community can enter the PSF and can work on things. And we can help them. We can utilize all the resources that we have to, to make it possible to do really cool things. So let's look at the first part. We want to reach out to everyone. The new membership model looks like this. So we don't have these nominated members anymore. We have a basic membership. Then we have supporting members, sponsor members, managing members, contributing members, and we have the fellows. Fellows is something that was uh, invented for the existing members to keep them happy. So, <laughs> so I'm going to go into detail a bit. Basic membership is the very basic uh, entry level kind of membership that you can have in the PSF. It doesn't take much. You go to a website, you enter your uh, details, and then you're a PSF member. That's it. No fees to pay. You don't get any voting rights, but you can work on that in order to get them. Uh, you may attend members' meetings, and hopefully we'll have much larger member meetings than we have now, with just maybe 20 or 30 people showing up. And it's open to anyone, anywhere. And uh, this is going to be announced soonish, so maybe in three months you can actually go to the website and then sign up. Then we have the supporting members. Those are basically the associate members that we already have. Those are individuals that want to uh, give us some money in order to help us. In return, they, get the, uh, they, they can call themselves supporting members. We probably reference them somewhere on the website. And they get voting rights. So they can have a word in, in how the PSF works internally. 
Then, of course, we have sponsor members. Sponsor members are uh, those members that actually give us uh, big chunks of money, and so we, we uh, really have to rely on them. Uh, nothing much changed there. We're going to have various new sponsor levels uh, for, for sponsors to sign up so we can address concerns by companies that want to give us more money and currently can't because we don't have this, the appropriate membership, uh, the sponsor levels for that. Uh, and we're working on that. Those have to be voted in by members. So it's not like you can sign up as sponsor member and you're directly a sponsor member. Uh, we have to do some due diligence on you because um, in the past we sometimes had people doing CO, for example, uh, that wants to sign up just to get a link on the website, and we don't want that. So, but normally the the companies that sign up they they do get voted in quite quickly. Right. So I talked about basic membership, and I talked about how you can you can gain voting rights in the PSF. There are two ways of doing that. One one thing is that you can you can manage things in the Python community, and thereby uh, sign up as managing member in the PSF. This works by, by managing a, a work group, investing a bit of time, and then we'll give you the managing member status and then you have voting rights. Now, of course, management or working in, in, in work groups or user groups is not everybody's uh, favorite kind of thing to do. So we also have this contrib contributing members uh, membership. And that basically says you work on a Python project somewhere, um, and that Python project is useful for the community. And because you're investing time into that project, we give you voting rights. So it's kind of the same thing. You're investing uh, extra work, and in return, you can have a say in the PSF actions. And then we have the fellows. Fellows are basically the currently nominated members. Um, and, and fellows is a special kind of status. It's a, you stay member for life. So it's kind of a high level um, PSF membership. But like I said, this was mostly done to, to convince the existing members that this is a good new model and to uh, stay with us. Right. And for people that, for members that, that can vote in the, in the PSF, they can, they can actually change the, the things of the PSF. The voting members, they vote the board members, for example. Uh, but we're going to have lots more votes than we currently have, because right now it's rather difficult for us to do uh, votes. This new membership form will allow uh, people to much more easily uh, interact with the PSF and make changes. In order to make that easier, we have a new uh, open source uh, voting system that works on the internet. I don't know, I don't know if you've heard it. It's called eVote system. Anyone have heard it? No? It's a, it's a system that was developed by Massimo De Piero and David Mertz. And we're going to set that up to, to do the voting. So voting will be much easier than it was before. Before we, we had a rather complicated email voting uh, system. And now this is going to be a web-based one where you just sign up on a page. It works a bit like, like a Doodle. So you just enter your vote, you click a button, and that's it. You vote it. So it's become very it's going to become very easy. We're going to use that for all kinds of things. Right. And when we proposed the uh, when when the proposal was made to change to the new membership model, we asked all the nominated members whether they actually wanted voting rights. Because you can have voting rights, but you can, you can say, okay, I have voting rights, but I don't really care. I don't really want to vote. So you can say, I don't want to uh, be a voting member. Or you can say, I don't want to vote for this year. And as it turned out, of the 283 members, only 157 actually wanted to have these voting rights. Okay, vision part number two. So now we want to get reach out to the community. We can we can now have everyone in the PSF. So basically, the PSF could become sort of a synonym for being a member of the Python community. Of course, now we want to enable you to work, continue work in your local communities and in your user groups and in your conferences. And so we want to make it possible for you to kind of move part of that work into the PSF and do that, uh, do that in a way that, that you can more easily tap into resources of the PSF. And the concept for that is using workgroups. 
work group is just a, it's a group of people that want to do stuff. Um, in order to set up a work group, you just have to write down what you want to do, how that work group shou should uh, do their work. For example, how decisions are made, what the members are, what the, uh, the membership for that particular work group uh, criteria should be like. And then you just you, you, um, ask the voting members whether this, uh, voting, uh, this working group would be something that they would, um, they would like to have, they would like to see in the PSF, and then the voting members just vote on that. And then you have a work group and you can work within the PSF on things. Some of those uh, work groups will also get a budget. Of course, budget always means money, and money is uh, financial risk. So uh, we have the, the board basically has to decide on whether you're going to get that budget or not. But like I said, we're, we do have some money, and we are very open to giving it to the community. And we think that this might be a good way of, of actually integrating the community more with the PSF and getting the money there more directly. Right, so we started in uh, 2013, last year. Uh, since then, we worked on the bylaws changes that we obviously have to make to, the, to enable all these things. Uh, we've now completed that work, so the next step is going to be that the, the uh, board votes these bylaws in and makes that official change. And then we hope by April 2014 that we can actually open up the floodgates and then get all of you sign up as PSF members. So that's what I want to share with you. So what can you do to help? Well, of course, you can join the PSF. <coughs> that would be one thing. But of course, we, would, uh, we, we all want you to continue what you're doing already, which is spreading the word about Python, and doing great things in Python, and helping us uh, grow as a community. Right, if you want to contact us, well, I'm uh, I'm at this conference. You can you can just ask me. You can write to psf at python.org. That email will go directly to the PSF board. You can ask questions there. You can reach out to PSF members. Do we have any PSF members here? Yes. One, two, three. Well, four. <laughs> yes. Five. So not that many. We need to definitely do something about that. Right. And yeah, talk to us. Tell us your your ideas. Um, possible ideas for work groups, for example. We can help you set up these work groups if you, if you think that it's, uh, uh, you're, you're not up to actually proposing it. And that's it. So I'd like to just say thank you for everyone coming to the conference. Thank you for coming here and listening to me. And thank you to the organizers of the, of the Python Fast and Dev Room, especially Seth Fan. And I think they, they need a hand. Hmm? I'm so not alone in this team. <laughs> right, of course, I'm, I'm talking about everyone in the Python Fast Time team. Do you have any questions about these things? Yeah. I have one. Yes? What is the budget for the PSF annually? The budget? Yeah. The budget is um, it's kind of difficult to say because the PSF also runs <coughs> the PyCon conference in the US mm -hmm. and that kind of um, uh, makes the budget look uh, much bigger than it actually is. So the, bu the, the, the overall budget size is uh, about I think one and a half million US dollars. Mm -hmm. But in reality, what the, the money that we, we have to, for example, do grants and funding and, and run the PSF is about say maybe 300k per year, that kind of range. Yeah. And also expenses to go and rent all the conference venues and stuff like that. Right, yeah. that's, that's why you have this huge budget size, but it's not really, it's not realistic. So you have to just look at the actual numbers that we have okay. in the bank that we can use. Other questions? Yes, you? Yeah, on the contributing member thing. So is this only for like library authors that they can use the other Python programmers? Or This is uh, still uh, an, uh, an open question because uh, we intentionally made this very broad. So, for example, the, the bylaws, they currently, uh, 
they currently don't even say that you have to work on Python projects. But I think uh, there's going to be uh, one final change in the bylaws to at least make Python sort of like a criteria for that. But apart from that, it's pretty open. Yes, other questions? You? Mentoring PSF members, new members that sign up. Uh, there are no plans at the moment, uh, but it's a very good idea. I think we should probably have a discussion about that to, to get people uh, up on speed on these things. By the way, the, the only criteria that we have for the, for the sign up for the membership is that you, you, uh, you sign up to the code of conduct that we have in the PSF. And that's the only kind of uh, thing that we ask you to do. Other questions? You? Uh, we are funding lots and lots of conferences, and more recently we also fund lots of workshops that use, for example, Raspberry Pis to teach Python to younger kids. Uh, one thing that we found is in, in recent years is that we are we're kind of losing the, the touch to the younger people in the Python community, so we're all getting older, and there are no new young people coming into the uh, community. And we're trying to address that via the Raspberry Pi a bit. So we're trying to get into education, <laughs> Uh, we're trying to help people that want to educate other people to, uh, to use Python. And the Raspberry Pi, because it uses Python as the standard language, uh, is a very good entry point for that. So that's what we're doing, for example. Other big projects, of course, are uh, the, the PyCon conference in the US. That's also the biggest money maker for the PSF. So the sponsors that sign up for, for a PyCon conference, they basically uh, give most of the money that the PSF has for, for doing all these things, doing all these grants and, and funding. We've also funded uh, several projects for porting libraries to Python 3. For example, PyOpenSSL was funded. Um, I think we gave money to, what was it? Uh, no, we, we gave money to, to, to PyPy, I think, for, uh, for, for Python 3 support to help with that. We gave money, for the, we gave money to the SDM project that, that um, Armin is going to talk about later on. Uh, we have a, you have to look at on, on our blog. There's a whole list of things that we did. Uh, I, just, I can't remember these, all these different projects right now. So we're, we're doing lots of things in that area, helping people move to Python 3. And if, if you have ideas for, for funding, then, well, please just talk to us. And because the problem there is that, of course, we could, we could just sit down and just think about things that we could do with the money. But we, of course, need people that actually implement those changes, right? And so it's much better if, if some group of people just approaches us with a request to help them with whatever they want to do, rather than having us go to people and ask them whether they meet, need money for certain things. Anyone else? Yes, you? What's the process to get the uh, working group? Uh, the process is you, you, have to, it's called, uh, you have to write a document called a charter for the work group. And that has to, um, that has to include a certain number of things. For example, you have to, um, you have to say how you're going to uh, do the voting in that uh, work group. If you have a voting process, you have to uh, say who the chairman is of that work group, how you're going to do the uh, the um, organization of the work group, how often it meets, what the members are. Um, you have to uh, think about reporting because in some cases it's, it's needed that the PSF board and the other members in the PSF know about what you're doing and you have to send in regular reports, those things. There is a, uh, in the new binders, there is a section uh, on, on how this is done and we have a few examples that we can show you. Uh, on how to write these things. But this, this idea with mentoring uh, new PSF members is probably good. We should probably apply that to, to work groups as well. Anyone else? Yes, you? Hey, I'm in an organization that uh, supports Python locally in my country. And we have sponsors. So uh, is there anything that PSF can 
this code if it already has sponsors. So you already have sponsors, so you have money, and you're asking what the PSF can still do for you. <laughs> it just sounds like a lot of work, you know, translating the charter and the reports. And it's not a lot of work. I mean, it's just uh, the, the charters that we have for the working groups are just one wiki page and maybe, I don't know, <coughs> two or three paragraphs. The charters are, the car the charters are only for, for working groups, so it's not even, uh, just because you're a, you're a subdivision, for for some country, that doesn't mean that you have to form a working group. I mean, it, it, it's optional. It, there's, it's not really necessary that you're that you're a working group. But I mean, if you organize sprints or something, then yeah, sure, ask for sprint money. <coughs> right. <coughs> this idea with the working groups is just to tr try to to get some form of organization for certain projects within the uh, uh, PSF, because we currently don't have that. We only have committees that um, that work on certain things. And only very few of those, because it's difficult to set them up, and the work groups are much easier to set up. So, but if you have an idea of how we can help you, then of course we're open to that, right? <laughs> um, with the uh, yeah, the one thing I mentioned, we're going to have a new website soon. Uh, it's supposed to go live in February. Um, it's supposed to go live on 17th. I don't know where we're actually going to make it, but. Uh, it's definitely going to be live for, for the PyCon conference in Montreal. And one of the things that we could do, for example, is we could get uh, pages set up on that site for the different local groups so that it's easier to find them. Because right now what we have is we have this huge wiki page where you have all the different uh, user groups listed, and it's not really very helpful. And we're going... Sorry? Well, I mean, you just have to invite people so that people can find you. But uh, of course, you can also put check pages on, on the website. There's nothing stopping you from that. We also want to make the website more open so that more people can, tr can contribute because the, the website that we have right now is very difficult to maintain. And it's also very difficult to get people to actually, well, to enable people to actually make changes. It's not so much that we don't want people to make changes. Uh, getting them up to speed with the, with the how the website currently works is just uh, it's an incredible incredible amount of work and the new website will be Django based and then you can just ask for for access permissions and you get a user login and you can just go ahead and do your thing. Thanks. Yes. And do you think the new website is going to launch? It's supposed to launch on February seventeenth. That's the current. Uh, date that uh, is being targeted. Whether we're actually going to make it is on the 17th. It's, it's not really clear yet because there's some still some issues left. And but we're definitely aiming for, for launch for, for the PyCon conference in April in Montreal. <coughs> and you can also already have a look. It's, uh, it's preview.python.org. <coughs> Anyone else? No? Well then, thank you very much, and hope to see you soon in the PSF.